So after two nights here at Etruria, we're moving on. Uh, we just got to go through that bridge. The other side of the bridge, just up the way, is a staircase lock. So it's two locks in one. And uh, so you've got to make sure the top lock's full before and the bottom lock's empty before getting in so the top lock fills the bottom lock. Simple. Nice one. So just got to double check that the top lock is full before we empty the bottom. Yep, looks pretty full. So here goes. Well, she sure looks a long way down. There we go. Easy peasy, eh, Fran? Yeah. So that's that lock done. And the further north we get, the more at home I feel. I just really love the northern landscape more than the south. I don't know why. There Coming are, from the Midlands as well, you know, maybe. There are subtle changes. The, the cities are different, and I don't quite know why. I don't know if it's the, the design of the buildings. I, don't, I mean that was particularly different because there were the bottle chimneys but I don't know I can't quite put my finger on what the difference is but it is very different to being down south until you come to new builds like that and you could be anywhere in the country well that's a shame isn't it isn't that's it true because everywhere you go in the country the building estates or villages as they like to call them are absolutely identical shopping centers are identical yeah you could go to any big, I swear you could go to any big shopping centre where it's the big famous stores and they're all exactly the same. Homogenous. That's a real shame. Is that when the word? Homogenous, yeah. Land. When you, you look how different cities used to be, you know, specific, there were book towns and fabric towns and everything had its own specific speciality. There isn't anything anymore, is there now? No, it's uh, declined somewhat in the last 50 years. But anyway, Britain, England... On that gloomy night. Yes, happy days. <laughs> still has its charm and its unique character. You know, there are certain things like the canals that uh, they haven't managed to wreck completely. Well, so, in fact... Oh, here we not, go. Not only that, it's not that they're not wrecking it, they're restoring it. Yeah. You know, so much work goes into restoring them, so it's a good thing. If you lose your rosemary, you're going to lose your rag. Perfect. Look at that. It's not a problem, is it? You're going to lose the top of your GoPro. That's Hanley Park and uh, certainly investing some money there doing it all up looks lovely. But even though there's all mooring rings on the side of the canal there we've been told on numerous occasions by lots of people don't moor up there because it's uh, a bit dodgy which is a shame. Meanwhile herself is just uh, admiring the view and not looking where she's going and she's just crunched into the side of the wall. 
it almost feels like you're in a London park. It's really beautiful. Just it's like going through Regent's Canal in London. Well, yeah, maybe it's not quite, but it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's, and what a fantastic place to be able to moor. Just having this on your doorstep. Says in the Nicholson's guide here that mooring between Etruria, which is here where we started this morning, is not advisable until you get past lock four, engine lock number four. That's a real shame because the park area we went through, just Hanley Park, was lovely and it would have been lovely just to moor up overnight, but uh, such is the way of the world at the moment. Just not advisable. Oh, we've got a lift bridge, electrically operated. So I'll wait till there's no traffic coming. And uh, Fran gets a bit closer. And I'll operate it. And it disrupted one car's journey. Ah, oh, this is more like it, eh, Fran? Yeah. More like it. In our comfort zone again now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and them's hills behind us, they're getting bigger every mile. Lambs are bleating in the field. We've been uh, not complaining but we've been bemoaning the fact that we can't wake up early enough to enjoy all of the day and we haven't no. got an alarm but I don't think we're going to need it tomorrow because I think no. <laughs> these little guys will be going about six o'clock. Oh well, the geese got us up this morning didn't they? Yeah. <coughs> no, no, yeah. About six o'clock is five o'clock but uh, the bungs in the bedroom windows that we put in they really make the room black don't they, they do. <laughs> next thing you know you wait we wake up some mornings half past eight which won't do Francis got work to do haven't we work to do <laughs> look at these fellas over there Now these paddles are really worn here. You've got two sizes on your windlass and even on the small size it's really slippy. So you really have to make sure you've got it well in because the last thing you want is your windlass slipping out and smacking you in the face, which happened to my brother back in about 1973. He ended up with a fantastic shiner. I bet he won't do it again when he gets his new boat.
That's some kids on their way home from school. Gone off to play hide and seek. Just left all their luggage lying around. Very trusting. Anyway, interesting lock this one. Lovely uh, old landscape around it. Having um, the favourite meal at the moment tonight, which is um, vegetable spring vegetable stir fried rice, and it's a fantastic discovery we've made from a couple called the Happy Pear P E I P E A R, who have a YouTube channel, um, and it's vegan cooking, but it's so quick. They cook this meal in five minutes. It takes me a little bit longer because I haven't got somebody going chopping up for me, but basically. Um, I'm going to fry some garlic and chilli quickly and here we have got um, celery, leek, courgette, asparagus and this is the stalk of broccoli which we've cut into matchsticks because it's mm. really really tasty. That all gets stir fried and then I add some mushrooms, the head of the broccoli is cut up really finely that just all gets stir fried with a teaspoon of turmeric which is the magic ingredient and cooked rice. The rice is cooking now. While the rice is cooking I've prepared the vegetables. That's almost done. Fry it, stir it all together and it is fantastic. I also add a little bit of um, Liam Perrins to it but that's if you're vegan that's got fish in it you can use soy sauce I think instead which we haven't got but it's the turmeric that gives it the flavor, flavor. Isn't it? it is superb but we just use whatever vegetables we've got fantastic recipe and it costs I think this will cost us less than two pound easily really because yeah. it's just all bits and pieces that we had left over right crack Some on then Well, the vegetables are now fried, they're still quite crunchy, that's how we like them. And I've put things in at different timings, so the broccoli stalks in, went in early to, to, to cook for longer. Um, the last thing is the finely chopped broccoli heads. And I'll just put the asparagus tips in at the last minute. Um, just fry this down for a minute or so. And the great thing about this dish is for us as vegetarians obviously and also us not having a fridge these ingredients all the vegetables can keep for a few days on the boat we're not worried about having a fridge because we don't have meat to keep cool and these it all keeps really really well it's just such a flexible dish just putting whatever you've got in the house in the boat even a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I don't know if Americans and Australians and New Zealanders are going to know about Liam Perrins. Yeah, but it's a real do. English thing. But soy sauce is fine. And it's not vegetarian or vegan, is it? Because it contains anchovy oil. Is yeah, that right? anchovies. anchovies. It just gives it a little bit of extra flavour. And the rice. So I guess once that. Worcestershire sauce bottle is empty. That's us done with Worcestershire sauce, then, isn't it? Really? Can't see us yeah, I guess wanting so. to eat, drink it, eat it. This would be a, with it. this would be a lot easier if you had a wok, but we don't have a wok, so we just have to manage. And boom! Yeah, that's too <laughs> we'll do that one again. We have got spoons, you know. Yeah, but you're in the way. So about a teaspoon. I'm gonna have a lovely yellow hand now. A turmeric and it just turmeric is supposed to be really really good for you it's one of the superfoods at the moment isn't it apparently so anti-inflammatory they're claiming anti-cancer and anti-everything i don't know about that but it just gives this dish a wonderful flavor 
as you can see, more than enough for two of us, but um, I'm sure we'll manage. Yeah, there won't be anything left <laughs> over, Fran, believe me. What does Chef say? Enjoy. <laughs> I thought this one was a windlass, but it's not. I need a key. It's electric. Key. That's what I needed. <laughs>